Well guys, another 16 hour day, but we finally got a flowing river. So today was a long ass day. Um, I'm sure you guys seen on the time lapse. I've been trying to keep the time lapses going, but the GoPro keeps overheating because it's so hot out here. Um, but we got the ponds in. So what I did was um, we ran. I ran that big two foot diameter corrugated pipe all on the bottom and that kind of was the form for the pond um, and that will keep the lizards from being able to dig underneath the pond and wrecking it because um, it is hard plastic they're not getting under that they're not digging away at that and then um, all I did was put some you guys might have seen me putting dirt in there in the very bottom that was literally just to fill the currigates on the bottom because I didn't want to have like a sluice box, sluice box uh, effect with ripples to where those were catching and keeping debris. I wanted the debris to continue to move down the river towards the sump. Um, so I kind of put some stuff in there and it also makes it really easy to walk in there. So if you're barefoot, you can walk in the river. And um, let me turn you guys around. So if you're barefoot, you can walk in the river. And uh, if you had the currigates still in there, you'd probably tear the liner. Um, just because your feet would kind of be sliding in and out of the currigates. But, oh man, it's really cool to see the, uh, the water flowing in here. And we have our divider. So you guys can see exactly what my idea was when I designed this whole system. But um, we got 
water filling this this above ground pond right now. That above ground pond is connected to this pond via the bottom drain and an overflow up top. And then those both of those ponds are overflowing into this river. So our high point is those ponds. Actually our very highest point is the filter outside the building which you need otherwise you would create a siphon effect. Um, so those are, those are our high points and then everything flows into this river. What I'm going to end up doing is increasing the flow rate and I'll change the the tube that's actually in the end pond that overflows into the river is only two inches in diameter. I'm going to up it to three um, so we can get all that flowing a little bit better and not have to worry about it uh, kind of um, backing up in those two ponds. So, but I made some minor adjustments down here. We had, uh, this thing keeps going out of focus, geez. We had some minor issues where we had like a, a low spot here and it started overflowing and then we also had a low spot down here, I believe it was. Um, but basically I just added more of the piping to bring that edge up higher. And also I ended up dropping down this big pond, the edge of this pond, which will drop down the entire level of the whole river. So all this is just overflowing down into this pond. Um, a lot of you guys might have noticed that we have these grates in here. My brother was nice enough to water jet these out, but these are the separators that keep the animals from swimming underneath the walls through the river. So they have TR water jetted out in them for toothless reptiles. And there's actually a uh, rubber hose, just a normal vinyl hose, 3 8 ID. Um, I think it's 7 16 OD. Uh, I just cut it in half or split it down the center and then ran it around the edge so the actual edge of the eighth inch aluminum is not rubbing on the liner. And then this is literally sitting in one of the kerrigates so it can't get pushed out this way and then it's just screwed into the wall in three spots. So it can't go anywhere. They certainly can't get through it. Um, but a lot of the, all the debris and all the water certainly can and that's all that matters. So um, we have four of those in here and uh, Everything seems to be working really well. I'll take you guys outside and show you the filter system. I had to get a new... I got this cool light hooked up. I had to get a new water chiller, actually. So, this pipe right here is the pipe that's connected to the bottom of the big sump pond. So, the sump pond is right here out inside the wall. That pipe goes down and comes up outside the building. So, that is the intake for the pond pump. And we have the pond pump and filter system and everything. So we have the pond pump sucking water from the bottom of the big sump pond. Then that water is getting pumped up into the Aquas Ultima 2000 filter that's full of media. I ordered new media for that and some other new stuff just to refresh the whole system. Um, and then on top of that, we have the outlet for the filtered water that goes down and connects to the bottom of the water chiller. And this chiller is set to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, I think is 25 degrees Celsius. So um, it keeps all the water at 77 degrees all the time. And this chiller actually heats as well. So if the water ever gets too cold, it can heat it back up to 77. So the water should stay at 77 all the time which is really critical to uh, keep the animals in breeding season. So that, that's filling from the bottom, which obviously aids in keeping all the air out of this system. And then that goes out of the chiller. And I can show you the front of the chiller. But that goes out of the chiller and into that pipe and that's inch and a half pipe and that goes underneath and feeds the two above ground ponds inside the building. So it's pretty rad. We got a nice little system going here. I'm glad we were finally able to get everything up and running. This is another thing that was on my list of stuff to get done and 
Whew. I'm just glad it's all done and over with. We're gonna Blair Witch Project. <gasps> I'm gonna walk into a tree. Um, I need like snot bubbles coming out of my nose. Am I the only one old enough to remember Blair Witch Project? I love that movie. Everybody thought that movie was real for so long. Um, so let's shut this friggin' thing off. Uh, so that's pretty much it for today. We got all that stuff done, rivers done, flowing. The lizards will be happy eventually. And uh, me and Moses are heading up to L.A. to Castles for Reptiles to see Juan. Um, and he's got all the driftwood, grapevine, any type of branches you can think of to fill out these big enclosures. You guys need to hit him up. Find him on Facebook. And um, he's got an awesome place. He has like two acres completely full of branches and stuff. It's rad. So uh, make sure you check that out. And uh, we'll be uh, filming a little bit on our way up there. So pretty cool.